speak, your servant listeneth. And the Lord will start telling me, if I don't hear, I don't write. I wait until when the Spirit of God says, okay, take your pen and start to write. And he gave me the passage. He said, where is that passage? He said, I, and the Lord started speaking, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. I said, where is that found in the Bible? He said, go to the book of Revelation. And I went to Revelation. I said, but you read chapter 21. And the Lord asked me to read. I said, okay, Lord, thank you. And he said, start to write. And I started writing. What are you going to speak? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we go into your word, will you speak life to us? Amen. I pray that everyone that will hear this message will be transformed. Amen. I pray that yoke will be broken. Amen. I pray that tears will be wiped off. Amen. I pray that God will strengthen everyone Amen. and your name will be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bind every demonic forces out of this place in the name of Amen. Jesus. Every shackles of the enemy Amen. will destroy you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alpha and Omega. Who can tell us what is the meaning of Alpha? Yes. The beginning. The beginning. What about Omega? The end. The end. Eh? The Lord reminded me and said, I am Alpha and the Omega of year 2017. I brought you from the beginning and I brought you to the end of it. And not God didn't stop there. He said, look, I am going to be the alpha for this next year you are going into. Amen. The Lord started speaking. And the Lord wants us to look back what he has done for us. The Lord has brought us to the last day of the year, 2017. Because he is alpha and omega. However, let us reflect on the year 2017 that is passing away into eternity. This year is passing away and you will never see it again. Amen. I said we'll never see it again. Yeah. Because God will do a new thing. Amen. Point to me and say, God will do a new thing. Say, God will do a new thing in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Reflection. Do you know that you need to give glory to God and thank the Lord? That's what our brother was saying this Sunday. We need to give thanks to God. Amen. Many of us pass through rough times. Maybe some of you don't know. I pass through rough times too. I don't tell people. I'm telling you. Two times I was laid off from my work. I work only for one week. From January, I did not do any regular work until March. I took that work one week after they laid me off. And I said, God, I think you remember. I said, God, how can I work for one week and they laid me off? I rested again. I said, Lord, please, let me rest a bit. Then I went and took another job in June. I worked for one week, and they let me off. And you know, if, you do, if they let you off, you know what that means. You don't have money. <laughs> but thank God that my sustenance, it doesn't depend on how much I work. My sustenance depends on who? On God in heaven. My sustainer is from him. My trust is in him. Yes. Yes, Lord. And I say, God, what's happening? And I say, Lord, let me seek the face of God. This word is, something is wrong. So when I said, God, please, give me peace about this work. And I told God, I said, Lord, I need what? Peace. Create a place for me that nobody will come and quarrel with me. The Bible says, then Isaac dug a well first time and they fought with him. You know, to dig a well in the desert <laughs> is that an easy job? He dug the first well, they fought with him. He, dug, he went to another place, he dug the second place, they fought with him. He dug the third time, they fought with him. Ah, Isaac said, Lord, please now. Some people will say maybe God has forgotten him. He didn't forget. God is bringing him. <coughs> then he dug the next one. And he said what? This is my Rehoboth. The Lord will take you to your Rehoboth. Amen. I said the Lord will take you to your Rehoboth. Amen. And the Lord took me to my Rehoboth. Rehoboth. The Lord has made room for me. That is the meaning. The Lord will make room for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord make room for me by October. The Lord make a room for me. 
I never even look at that job. I didn't look at it. I didn't observe it. But somewhere I saw it and I said, let me try it. Let me just try it. I think Pastor Valadie was there when we were filling that application. I said, let me try it. And they said, it is part time. Mm -hmm. I said, part time? I know some people were praying. And I applied for it. And I filled the form. And I signed it. And I got a phone call later and they said, come for an interview. Mm -hmm. You're going to instruct in the college? I said, college. I said, but prepare to do something. They said, oh, you have to teach for 10 minutes. Whether we like you or not, we don't know. But that 10 minutes will determine. And I went for 10 minutes. And the president was there. Everybody. I didn't even know that all the people they gave me as students were president and the instructors and all the high people there. They were my students. I didn't know them. <laughs> and I thought for 10 minutes. The man said, once I wave my hand to you, you stop. Your 10 minutes has expired. So, after 10 minutes, the man waved to me. And I said, class, we're going to stop here for today. And I left. And the man said, okay, can I see you out? He went out. And the man said, look, you taught and I was carried away. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, I was touched. Ah, he said, this one, I don't know, but my heart was deeply touched by what you taught. Mm -hmm. He said, but sit down here, your fate will be decided <laughs> by those people <laughs> over there. Yeah. And the panel we decided that the, 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 the man came back after some time and said, Look, we are giving you the job. Yeah. He said, We are giving you the job. He said, Everybody enjoyed it. You touched them, you know, and things like that, you know, but we are giving you the job. He said, You will come back to do orientation. I went to the orientation. They gave me part time, oh, mind you. When I was feeling, the man said, But you see, we give you part time. Can you take, you ask for the morning section. We give you the evening also. Can you take it? Hmm. I said, okay. Well, I will take it. And as I took money and evening. And God gave me peace. May God make you give you your real boss. Amen. I said, the Lord will make, make room for you. Amen. Point to me and say, the Lord will make room for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, Looking back, open your Bible with me to Psalm 103. And we look at that quickly. Psalm 103. <laughs> and I want you to know that God cares for our lives. You know, at times we look at our lives and say, yeah, 2013, I mean 2017 was hard. It was really hard for some of us. But I want you to know that even in the midst of that difficult situation, God is working his purpose for you. Amen. Because he will make room for you. Amen. Psalm 103, near the word of the Lord, said, Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Our brother quoted that passage. He was saying it. And he said something. He said, Bless the Lord of my soul. Forget not all his word. Benefit. Benefit. He who forgives all your iniquities, who healeth all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who grants you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like what? Like the eagles. Listen, in the evening we go to meet, by the grace of God, to shower him 2018. Truth will be given to each one of us. To give testimony of what the Lord has done. But look at this. He said, give glory to God. That's why I want every time I kneel down before God, I say, God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all what you have done for me. When it seems the ways are closed, God opened his own door. Divine heaven of God opened under heaven and you start to operate in a new dimension. Mm -hmm. What are his benefits? Number one benefit, he said, who forgive all your iniquities. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one thing, whomsoever God forgives is a blessed person. Mm -hmm. God forgave me all my sins. My names are written in the book of life. If I die today, I'm not afraid of where I'm going to. I know I'm going to go to heaven. I have no doubt in my heart. Paul said, to depart is better to be with the Lord. 
He forgave all our sins. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ and repent, you better do so. If you die without Jesus Christ, you are lost for eternity. Mm. Completely lost. Five brothers died. The Bible says they went to hell. And another brother died. And he was in hell. He lifted up his voice. He said, oh, this place is too hot for me. Even he has no drop of water. And he saw Father Abraham. Go and read it in the Bible. And he said, Father Abraham, please can you allow that man to dip his finger and cool my tongue? And they told him, sorry. We can't do that. It's too late. And the man said, this place I am is not a good place. Can I... <coughs> Can you send somebody to my brothers that are there who are still living? Tell them they should not come here. What did he tell? Father Abraham tell them that they have the prophets. And most if they won't listen to them. But nobody can go from the grave here to go and tell them. Brethren, if God gives you the grace of life, follow the Lord with all of your life and know him. That's why I know Mama Fisher is in heaven. I remember the day she came for Bible study. She sat in that place. Mm -hmm. But I wrote you know how long we've been asking that the Lord will bring her to Bible study. Mm -hmm. I never knew that that was the last time we would ever come to Bible study. Mm -hmm. She came and she sat down there. And now she's in heaven. Amen. If you die today, where will you go? That's the very question. You need to reflect. The Bible says, He forgave all my iniquities. God forgave us our sins. I know my sins are forgiven. My names are written in the book of life. Are you having that assurance your name are written in the book of life? Let me tell you, that's why we have a responsibility to make sure we share the gospel with people. I never thought Mama Fisher would die one very soon. I, did, I never thought it. But I was having a burden in my heart that we need to get her to come and hear the word of the Lord. And she came. Is God giving you a body for people that are not born again? You better share it because if they die, that's the end of it. Mm. No priest, no pastor, no anointed man of God can do anything once they are dead. This is the time they are living. Share the gospel. He forgave all our wars in iniquities. That's not the end of it. Who heals all your diseases? How many of us have experienced healing this year? I've experienced healing. The Lord touched me. He heals you. Don't forget that benefit. Don't forget it. Give him thanks for it. And say, Lord, you heal my diseases. You heal my sickness. Don't forget the benefit of the Lord. That's not the end of it. Who redeems your life from what? From destruction. Many of us don't understand some things. You know, I made mistakes many times. I'm driving on the road and I find myself driving on the other side of the road, oncoming vehicle. Oh, wow. I'm serious. And I said, am I crazy? Why am I driving on this side of the road? Imagine if another vehicle was coming that time. What would have happened? I would have been dead. I don't call it. But God delivered me from what? Destruction. Would you give him thanks for the destruction he has delivered you from? Many times we don't we take this thing for granted. Until you see it happen, that's when you know, eh? This is terrible. Look at people that died in New York two days ago. Just because a three-year-old girl or your child was playing with gas in the house. Twelve people dead. One of them. One of our veterans, well, I call him a veteran now, he just came from the war front. He didn't die in the war front. He came and died here because he was trying to rescue other people. He just came two few days ago from the war front. And if he was trying to rescue as many people as possible. In the midst of it, he died. Brethren, God delivered you from what? Destruction. Can you count how many destruction God has delivered you from? Wouldn't you give him thanks and say, Lord, I appreciate all what you have done for me? Instead of grumbling and complaining. Appreciate what God has done. Who forgive you, redeem your life from destruction? Who crowns you with what? Loving kindness and what? Tender mercies. Ah. 
tendernesses. Even in our mistakes, God got us what? Tendernesses. <laughs> Do you remember the mercies of God? The Bible says it's by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. God has been merciful to us many times. This year, who comforts us in our sorrowful moment? Many times we pass through sorrowful moments, you look at some situation, you just weep and cry. And nobody sees it. God comforts you in your sorrowful moment. Who is here that has not been comforted this year? You want to say, God, you didn't comfort me in my difficult situation. We pass through difficult times. We grieve at times. But our God is there. He comforts us in our troubles. That's one of the benefits. You know, some people <coughs> pass through situations and there's nobody to comfort them. Nobody. No even body will give them a call and say, how are you doing? You hear the call, somebody cares for you, you better thank God for it. It's God who moves to comfort us. To give us comfort. The mercies of God God comforts us. Do you know what? There are times I look at the messes of God. There are times I need I needed some money. And it's not small money. Huge money. I need a lot of money to do certain things. And at times I don't even have it. And somebody called me and said, you need money? I, I, I have some money. Just use it. Use it. Whenever you're ready, you give it back to me. Don't you think that is mercy of God? Somebody walking up to you. I didn't tell him anything, no. I didn't even ask him. He just called and said, Ah, don't you need money? I said, Definitely, I need money. He said, But I have some money. I said, You have some money. He said, mm -hmm. He said, Yes, I'm willing to let you use that money. Use it now. When you are ready. You can give it to me. Don't you think that is mercy of God? You know, think about it. That is mercy of God. Mercy! There is a man I know of very well. The man was teaching and he made a mistake in the classroom and he made a mistake. Of course. And not only that he made a mistake, they were supervising him during that time when he made a mistake. You know, and the man sat down and observed everything, and the face of the man was you say, mm, this guy messed it up. And when they gave him the evaluation, the man was scared that maybe they would fire him. So when they were discussing, the man said, before he even asked anything, he said, you thought I would fire you? I saw the mistake, you corrected it. I'm not going to fire you for anything. Don't let it cross your mind that I will ever fire you. You are not going to be fired. I need you here. Is that no mercy of God? Mm -hmm. That's why the fact he made a mistake. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the man said, don't even let it cross your mind that I will fire you. He said, I'm not going to fire you. I need you here. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's the mercy of God? The mercy of God. That's why we need to give thanks to God for who he is, what he has done for us, who sustain us. The Bible says, who satisfies you with what? Your mouth with what? Good things. The Lord will satisfy you with good things. Amen. I said, the Lord will satisfy you with good things. Amen. You will have great testimony Amen. to say, this is what the Lord has done for me. Amen. He said, he will satisfy you with good things so that your youth is renewed like what? Like God. God will renew your life. People will look at you and say, ah, you look fresh, oh. Which kind of food you they eat? Show me this kind of food. It's just God. Isaiah 43. Open your Bible with me to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 2. Alpha and Omega. You need to look at the benefit of God upon your life. And give him thanks because God is the beginning and the end. He has brought us thus far to this point of our lives. The last day of the year 2017. He said, when you pass through waters, you must have passed through waters, I will be with you. He said, when you pass through rivers, they shall not overflow you. 
When you walk through the fire, they shall not burn you, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Lord, my brethren, let us not forget. Look at the fires and the waters of life that as you have passed through this year and you are still alive. Mm. It shows the benefit of God. Mm. It shows the benefit of God. I'm telling you the truth, the benefit of God. And that's why we need to appreciate God. Appreciate our Lord Jesus Christ. As this year passed away, now looking forward, what are we supposed to do? Hear what God says because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 31 says, I am Alpha and the Omega, God who has brought you to the end of year 2000 and what? 17. Is the Alpha taking you into 2000 and what? And I remember several times, Brother Marcos, we prayed and said, Lord, please do something for him. And God, in his own infinite mercies, did something for him. Are we not going to be grateful to God? We should be grateful. Oh, Brother Marcos, you're not grateful? Oh, yeah, I am. Are you sure you're grateful, small? <laughs> You know, when I look back and I say, Lord, thank you for doing something for him. We should be grateful. Do not be entangled and trapped by the good and unseemly unpleasant experiences. You know, at times we have very difficult experiences of life. Your car breaks down suddenly and you wonder why or not is my car breaking down. Why is or not? But let me tell you one thing. Don't be entrapped. By that situation, Revelation 21, let's read, look into it again. Verse 4. Look at the word of the Lord. And God shall wipe away how many tears? All their tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more what? No more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are what? Are passed away. Whatever you have passed through in the year 2017 that is passing away, whether it is good or bad, I want you to don't be entrapped by it. Don't be entrapped by those bad experiences. Don't be entrapped by those good experiences. Mm. And God says, they are what? Passed away. What are you supposed to do? If God has delivered you and helped you in year 2017, then year 2018 will be brighter. Amen. Amen. Point to me and say it shall be brighter for you with me. Amen. Amen. Brethren, and the word says in verse 5, he said, And he said, He that sat on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things what? New. Say, The Lord will make all things new for me. He will make all things new. He said, Be right for these things are true and faithful. I want to assure you, God is going to make all things new for you. Amen. As you enter into year 2018, I want you to don't miss the meeting we're going to have tonight. We're going to start by night. We're going to praise God. We're going to give testimony. We're going to worship God and enter into the new year. God is going to shower us into the new thing he will do. Amen. Point to me, he said, the Lord will do a new thing in my life. The Lord will do a new thing in my life. He will begin a new thing. Because he is Alpha and what? Omega. And he said to me, verse 6, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to him that a thirsty of the fountain of water of life. What? Freely. You need to thirst for great things. If you look into that side, he said, expect what? Great things from God. Many times, when you write your check, some people write too small check to God. Write fat check to the throne of God. I say amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. I say write fat check. Amen. <laughs> You'll be blessed. Amen. Definitely. Amen. You know, many of us are too, I don't know the word I'm using, we are too, we mind things too much. You need to make your fat big and say, God, this is my check. I'm depositing in the, in the bank of heaven. And you will cash it. Aim for big things. Never limit yourself for small. Don't ask for small things. Ask God for big things. The things that when God does it, people will say, praise be to God. They will say, brother, let us dance to the Lord. 
God will do a new thing because he's Alpha and what? And Omega. And that's why you need to come with an expectant heart before the Lord. Don't come. You know, everyone I look at the life of our Lord, all those who came with an expectant heart, they never went back disappointed. Everyone that would come before the Lord with an expectant and say, Lord, I'm believing you. Do I pray over this thing for years, but this year, you do a new thing. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years just made up her mind and said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be what? I shall be made whole. Oh. This other woman, this other man in John chapter 5 was sick for 38 years of his life. But he met Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus intervened in his case. And that sickness for 38 years would disappear in one tinkle of an eye. If you come with an expectant hand, God will do the impossible. If because of you, God will change the decree. I'm telling you the truth. Because of you. If you come with an expectant hand and say, Lord, I'm believing you because you are the Alpha and what? And oh, yeah. Omega. The beginning of a new thing. God once said, he said, I want to dwell with you. Revelation 21 verse 3. He said, I had a great voice out of heaven said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with them. He will dwell with them. And they shall be his what? His people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Let me tell you, one of the things that God asks for is for people that we identify with him. God wants men and women that we are say, These are my people. And God is able to boast over them and say, These are my children. I know this one belongs to me. And God said, he said, I will be with you, and they shall be my God. My, my people, and they shall be my, I shall be their what? Their God. God is looking for men and women that will commit themselves, and God will be their God. God is looking for that. He's thirsty for that. Let me tell you, God wants relationship. He wants men and women that will come and worship him. The Bible says, God seeks for those who worship in the spirit and in truth. God is looking for them. When God finds you, you worship in the spirit and truth. It will shower his blessing upon you. You become what? Special. The Bible says you suffer no one to do them evil. God will allow no one to do you evil if you only trust him. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Alpha and what? And oh, Omega. Yeah. God is longing for men and women. Let me tell you one thing about God. God is a jealous God. Our brother mentioned that. If you don't follow him, he's jealous. Oh, let me tell you the truth. God is very jealous. The day you don't pray to him, you don't turn to him, he is not happy. Mm. The day you don't come to his house, not because you are God, he's not happy. He's a jealous God. Your heart you give to somebody else, God is not happy. He's a jealous God. Exodus chapter, let's read, read in Exodus chapter 20. Let somebody read for it. Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 6, and Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. Exodus. God is very jealous. That's why if you forsake him, he will not be happy. He will oppose you. But if you stay with him, he will fight on your behalf. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Yes. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Yes. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, Mm -hmm. or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Passage. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Listen to this. Those who hate God, you talk to them about Jesus, they hate God. God will visit their iniquity on their children unto fourth generation. Those who hate God. You hate Jesus Christ, you don't want to follow him, and you oppose him, he will fight your family to fourth generation. Because you hate him. So you have to make up your mind whether you're going to love God. If you love God, you are preserving up to the fourth generation of what is going to happen. I'm telling you, it's a serious matter. Your decision, your love for God will affect your generation up to fourth generation. It's a serious matter. Why do you think we enjoy what we enjoy in America today? Why? Do you know some generations back, they love God? 
That's why we are enjoying it. This nation is the most powerful, richest nation in the whole world. Why? Because some people, some years back, generation back, they made up their mind, Lord, you will be our God. Don't look at what people are doing today. Today they are running away. They are saying, no, Ten commandment. Don't pray in the schools. We don't want to lay that foundation for generations. That's why we need to believe God today and our children so that fourth generations to come can benefit from it. And God says, he will show mercy. Look, read the Bible. He said, I will show mercy to thousands of them that do what? That love me and keep my commandment. God will show me. There are some things that God will do not because you pray. It's just because of the mercy of God. Because of his mercy. God will do something not because you are praying. And there are some things that happen in your life because you pray. You look at some music, I never pray for this. And God is giving me because of what? His mercy. Point to me and say, let your mercy be upon me. Let your mercy be upon me and my household, oh God. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. The Bible says, by the mercy of God that we are not what? Consumed. Make up your mind. You don't hate God. Don't let go by your action, by what you do. Love him so that the mercy of God can be upon your generation, your children, your children's children, your relative, people that accompany you. You may not have children, but you have people. The mercy of God, let me tell you one thing. Because of you, God will bless certain people. Oh, you don't know. Because of you, we look and say, because of you, because of Abraham, God preserved Lord. Lord didn't know the Lord, but because of Abraham, God said, ah, I can't Lord die because of Abraham. There are some people God will preserve and bless them because of you. Amen. Because you have love for him. He will just look on them and say, because of my servant this, I'm preserving this life. Mm. Brethren, looking forward, God wants us to trust him. Trust him. Trust Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3. I need to. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3 quickly, please. To Proverbs chapter 3, let somebody read verses 1, 5 to 7, and somebody to look Luke 1, 45, and Luke 1, 37. And I will have somebody else to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, and 2 Chronicles 15, 2, and 2 Chronicles 12, 14. Then we'll round up from there. Let's look at Proverbs, verse 3. Chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. Listen to this. Trust in who? Trust in the pastor with all your heart. <laughs> no, what did he say? Trust in the Lord. In who? I'm not saying you should not trust the pastor. But who are you supposed to trust? The Lord. Trust in the Lord with half of your heart. One quarter of your heart. Listen, listen to this. Many times some of us trust God, we 